this week on After the 80. We've got the pleasure of introducing Mark Tukey to the panel, and thanks Thank for you. coming on board, Mark. No, it's a pleasure. Excellent. Well, Bomber's been pretty keen to have you on board as an ex, uh, ex Parramatta Eels player. Yeah, he has been chasing me for a little while, actually. I've just been too, <laughs> yeah, he, too busy lately. He's just been brushing me, but I, fi <laughs> but I finally got him here, so We've good to have you, Mark. Yeah, it's all good. Thanks yeah. for having me. Excellent. Well, for those who don't know, uh, Mark is uh, ex-New uh, Zealand Warriors and Parramatta Eels uh, NRL player himself, and uh, since uh, taking a step off the field as well, you've gone into uh, player development and uh, with South Slogan in the past as well and the Canberra Raiders as a, uh, as a talent scout. So can you tell us what that's like being, uh, you know, the transition off the field into a, a new role? Yeah, I was very lucky. Um, when I first got scouted by a guy named Brian Edwards, Pinky, he um, took me to the Crushers mm -hmm. um, here in Queensland and I went around and played in a few other clubs and went over to England. Yep. Um, then I retired from England and come back to um, Australia where my parents are, you know, with the, with the kids and things like that. And um, I caught back up with Brian Edwards again, mm -hmm. uh, Pinky, who was a recruitment man for the Canberra Raiders. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was very, very lucky to fall fall into a position where I could do my uh, do the job I love of um, helping the kids and um, give them back to the game, really. So mm -hmm. I did development and I was um, coaching at the Cyril Connor Mal Meninga at South Logan there as well. So had a lot to do with a lot of the elite uh, development of young footballers in Logan. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so uh, like being very blessed and very lucky to um, stay in the game, really. Mm -hmm. Well, there's been some very talented players to come out of that area. We're looking at the end of uh, Corey Parker's career at the moment. He's a proud uh, Logan boy himself. Uh, yeah. Well, tell us about some of the players that you've uh, you've you've been in contact with over the years. Well, as well. yeah, from I'm from Logan Bros. That's the mm -hmm. club I was at. So yeah, Cam Smith and Corey yep. Parker and Josh Papali, those boys are mm -hmm. all from that club. Um, but yeah, I've had the pleasure to work with a lot of those guys. Uh, Edric Lee, Brenko Lee just scored mm -hmm. four on the weekend. Um, uh, Josh Papali, um, yeah, Milford. Um, so I had a lot to do with all those young kids as um, you know, 16 and 17 year olds. Mm -hmm. um, Josh Papali is probably uh, the first guy I had um, a lot more to do with mm -hmm. um, getting him to Canberra. And it's just, he's a very humble type person. Mm -hmm. And it's no coincidence that he's gone on and made it to uh, play NRL. And Luke Bateman's probably in the same mm -hmm. boat. Um, just the stable family, very nice kid, mm -hmm. works really hard. And you don't fluke it to get to the NRL anymore. Mm -hmm. You've got to really be a good bloke and um, yeah so it's very rewarding watching those guys go on and um, uh, bigger and better things. You, you played 40 games for Parramatta there, what what were some of your times at, at, at Parramatta you played under Brian Smith. Smith, what yeah. type of coach was he? Brian Smith was, uh, I, I still to this day say he's the best coach I ever had, mm. um, he, he could get the best out of players, he could make you, um, probably back then Brian's downfall was he could also break you, um, he <laughs> played a lot of mind games and things mm. like that with you, um, it worked well, don't worry about that, but I, he hasn't won a grand final and I think maybe that's just the part that he um, has, has lacked. Um, He's since um, turned into a bit of a people person as well, which I think that was his struggle a little bit. But um, yeah, Parramatta, yeah, we ha I had some great times down there. And like I said, I was very blessed to have the Bulldogs, um, all those Bulldogs boys in the pack, mm -hmm. Dimmick, Pay, McCracken, Smith. Uh, and then there was a bloke named Jason, Kay uh, Nathan Kalis, Nathan Hindmarsh, you know, and myself and Mick Vella. So pretty much all of them went on and played for their country except for me. So I was very <laughs> blessed uh, to uh, go and into a pack like that and, um, just, yeah, that, there was a lot of leaders and for a young, you know, 19, 20 year old, it was a very good experience down there at Para. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. You had a go at council too. What? Mm. What, yeah. brought, what brought that on? Yeah, it's a, there's a bit of a long story to it, but in 2008 when I came back to Australia, I, um, I've got a daughter with cerebral palsy and um, I, I was overweight and uh, me and my mate started riding a bike to try and um, just get fit and we said why don't we ride from um, Brisbane to Canberra and that was a great idea over a few beers and then um, we ended up putting together a bike ride together and I, I met up with a couple of local councillors to donate money and they ended up coming on the ride with me, Luke Smith, who's now the current mayor of Logan. Um, and they planted the seed in my head back then, 2008. Um, the, the current um, councillor in my area was retiring after 30 years of service uh, and they said, now's the time. So I said, right, oh, I'll have a crack. Uh, the job entails just to be a community person and that's what I do. So um, it, was, uh, it was an easy decision for me. Um, when I look back on it now, politics is definitely not for me and I know why Mal Meninga uh, finished a, such a short <laughs> career as well. Uh, it's just that there's a lot of fakeness and there's a lot of um, 
yeah, you've just got to, it's, it's just not a really good environment p personally and um, it's not me. I'm, mm -hmm. uh, I, I like to help people and uh, with no, uh, no reward after it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, it was, yeah, it's, I had a go, I had a crack. It was a good experience, but yeah, I would never do it again. I'm where, ruling that out. Where have you ended up now? Right now, I, I've been doing uh, marathons and I've got big two sports. I set up, um, again, I, I, when I retired, I got to about 150 kilo, um, mm -hmm. type 2 diabetes and overweight and things like that. And um, I got really sick and I just needed to kick up the bum really to start mm -hmm. losing weight. Um, so um, I, I, I put an ad in the paper for people that wanted to do a marathon with me. Yep. And I got five texts back to say, yeah, we're keen. So I got a dietitian, a coach, uh, and we walked the Gold Coast Marathon about th uh, two, or two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. Just walked the whole way. Um, since then, I've done yeah, six odd marathons. I run some boot camps down in the local area. Um, I'm looking to do a few more things with sports travel and things like that. And just in the last, uh, for the last two years, I've actually been um, working in insurance, uh, mm -hmm. doing personal insurance for mainly for rugby league players that um, play the game that aren't insured. Mm -hmm. um, but anyone with an income, we do a lot of the personal insurance stuff. So we've just launched the business in the last year. A couple of weeks uh, with active wealth, um, so trying to stay in touch with the you know this fitness and the healthy living, and mm. and also you know people are really uh, poor with their money, and uh, mm. a lot of people think that that they don't have money, so they can't you know um, get get advice on money. But mm. um, you got to know what to do to get the money and how how to treat your money. So it's um, it's a learning curve for me as well. But I'm passionate about um, players playing mm. the game that they love. And they're very underinsured, and, uh, mm. and it's, the, it's basically society in Australia at the moment. What kind of insurance do you uh, kind of suggest for a player? In, in oh, 100% uh, income protection. Yep. Um, so these guys, a lot of the guys playing in the Ipswich comp, even the QRL players, mm. um, they play footy for fun, mm -hmm. um, for, in, for, for socially, mm. um, semi-professional, but they have to go to work Monday and uh, mm. with the hammer, get on the hammer and the spade and uh, things like that. So we ensure their income for them. Mm -hmm. um, we also look after their life and TPD uh, and mm. if, they're, you know, if they were to injure themselves badly, um, like an allocation. McKinnon scenario so mm -hmm. um, so there's a really big market out there and again I'm passionate about just helping people so mm -hmm. uh, and we, we we sponsor footy teams and clubs and put back as much money as we can as well in the community um, I, I'm a very very big on charity obviously yep. with the disabled daughter so I do a lot of uh, charity stuff as much as I can mm -hmm. for any players that are, are in the Ipswich, Ipswich competition that are looking for some insurance as well how do they get in contact with you for that oh 100% yeah mm -hmm. just go through the guys at the um, Mr. Rugby League. I know uh, mm -hmm. Brendan Lindsay there as well. So yep. um, we're looking to form a bit of a partnership there in the future, and, and we're trying to help as many people as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, I've already been down to Goodna. That's how I know Albie and um, and mm -hmm. Ramon. Um, so the Goodna club has um, really jumped on board um, yep. the insurance as well, and I'm currently uh, out at the Swifts mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, but yeah, we, I, I, I'm, we're um, not governed by anyone, and we can. I want to get out there and help everybody. Um, so if anyone's interested, yeah, mm -hmm. just get in contact with us. In, in the last last couple of days you've just been appointed assistant coach of the Queensland University side again what's what's that entail yeah I, in 1996 I played in the um in the for the Australian uni side and we went over to England for a month mm -hmm. as an as an 18 year old um big experience for me um, and I've always wanted to put back into that and uh, I've coached the Queensland um tertiary side I've coached the Queensland University side so the the Q Cup players that are doing a study um, that's the Queensland um, University side, and then the tertiary is the midweek Wednesday mm. comp for the for the actual students. And I, I find that a little bit more rewarding to just the good old average um, kid who just loves the game, mm. plays on a Wednesday night, and uh, I, and again to go in and develop him and take him down and have a, a state of origin experience. Mm. Um, I've done that for the last few years, and it's been um, it's it's very rewarding. And we always like to beat you know, New South Wales at anything. So <laughs> I've done that now for probably five years. Yeah. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. assistant coach or coach. Yeah, so. Excellent. Well, a man of many talents, mate. It's good to hear uh, that you have been just as active off the field as you have been on it. Yeah, it's been it's been crazy busy. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I like to keep busy and just help people. Excellent. Well, I'm sure we'll see you around the grounds in Ipswich all the time, mate, and especially with the finals this week, this uh, next couple of weeks coming up as well. There'll Absolutely. be a few few players who definitely need some insurance no, over the next couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, give me a call. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, if you want to hear Mark talk about uh, the Ipswich Rugby League's semi-finals coming up this weekend as well, please tune in to After the 80 this Thursday night on uh, 9.30 at Bris 31.